sorry for that. Um, so I'm so on. I um, working with the new manager for the university and the postdoc, and I'm gonna talk about uh, probing the cosmic web with FOBs and start with the very exciting FOB. So you all know this plot. I guess you remember it from the uh, very first day of this workshop. So what we see here is basically you see. Uh, the first FOB detected in 2007, I think it was detected by chance. And you can see, so there are two important time scales you, you can get from this. One of them is basically just this delay time, where you see that high frequency arrives earlier than low frequency. So this is high frequency. Uh, and this is uh, related to the dispersion measure up to a constant. Uh, the other uh, important time scale is the scattering time scale. It has to do with the width of this uh, of this signal. And I'll start with the with the scattering time scale, and at the end we'll go back to the uh, dispersion measure. So impo one important thing to keep in mind is that the dispersion measure is uh, depends basically on the column density and while the, the scattering measure depends on the fluctuation of a uh, free electron density. So. Okay, so FOBs are very exciting. We don't really know what they are, but they have all these properties which make them very useful. So they're abundant, they're very bright. They are very compact objects with important points for the scattering. And the, the fact that they come from cosmological distances means we can use them to explore the way, uh, the way um, of all the ionized gas, gas before them. And basically, this sensitivity, this depends, uh, 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 this is related to the dispersion measure and this is related to the scattering So uh, they are uh, very mysterious, but you can still use them. Okay, so I'll start with the scattering. So say we have some source, this is the FOB, and we are the observer. And now we have this uh, uh, plasma screen, an uh, ionized gas. This is the scattering screen we're going to consider. And in most a, a calculation is considered basically in the middle, which makes it, this is the ideal place for it to a, do most of the scattering. And as I said before, the, uh, the scattering time scale is basically a, the broadening of this signal. And you can see here, this is a, a different frequency showing the same, a, a, in this case, this is the small cell. And you can see this broadening, there's a very strong dependence on frequency. And it's basically, if you have a, if you have a pulse which is almost like a delta function, very, very sharp pulse, once you have a scattering, it will have this exponential tail. So it's a convolution between this sharp a pulse. And I'm just going to show this equation just to see the descendants. I, I won't show how to get there, but keep in mind, this is all done for pulsars. This is also true for pulsars. So uh, these results are very, very old. So you have papers from the 70s dealing with this and using all these results, uh, except, I guess, from, for the redshift descendants, uh, given that they're pulsars. But uh, yeah, so uh, Everything up to here is very uh, well tested. Okay, so just to mention the, the, all the properties here. So L naught is the outer scale of turbulence. In the density fluctuation is modeled as the power law, simple power law, with the Kolmogorov uh, turbulence spectrum of the turbulence. Um, 
and FA, which is an important uh, parameter here, is basically the average, if you go through a screen, a scattering screen, it's the average number of clumps or clouds will encounter for some line of clouds. <coughs> Okay, so now let's go to the cosmic web. So this is uh, uh, the same simulation that we showed you before, showing here the in color. Let me go back. <laughs> okay, so you should. Here we see it edge on, and you can see there are two sheets colliding with each other. And as they collide, you can see that there's a small scale structure forming in the sheet. Uh, so, Neil already mentioned this simulation. You saw the ICM simulation, which is something really. Uh, so, they are a zooming simulation uh, taken from the CNG 100. A one pair was selected with the, with the five times and the twelve sort of match mass each, uh, and basically zooming in on the cylinder between them. Uh, in what I show here, this is the highest resolution uh, out of the five. And the basic idea we're gonna. Uh, try to explore here is the fact that since we see all these uh, substructure in the simulation which are zooming in on a, in a minute, we make this analogy of it, it's kind of becoming a common knowledge. You have if you have a hail, hot halo uh, with the shock you get this multi phase uh, uh, gas in the CGM. So uh, in the same way we get the uh, shocks for these la large scale structure of filaments and sheets, and we find this multi phase uh, uh, warm hot uh, intergalactic unit. So, this is zooming in on one small box of the sheet, and we see here uh, this is a, an example of a resolution of TNG 100. This is very high resolution. It's 10 times TNG 50, so a, a very big difference. And you can see all these substructure, <coughs> small, uh, small clumps. Now, we want to explore this also in filaments. Unfortunately, in filaments, we, we don't resolve here the, uh, these very, very small clumps. Um, and but but we do see some substructure here. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So what we saw before here, we saw this uh, small structure which is of the order of the cooling length of the minimum cooling length, uh, given these conditions. And what we do. Uh, in, in the following is basically to calculate analytically the cooling length, uh, assuming isobaric cooling, and for a given pressure, metallicity and redshift, we can get basically everything. We get the minimum cooling length and the associated temperature, wow, uh, and the density, and I'll go faster. <laughs> Uh, you'll hear all about the shattering and the uh, uh, the shattering and you can find the uh, pressure from the uh, view on stock uh, after lunch. But okay, so here I'm showing basically the the this is the pressure, the density for sheet, filament and halo. And looking at uh, this L naught is basically the cooling length, the minimum cooling length. In, in the bottom panel is the electron density. And we see here these lines are associated with, uh, so here these are halos of 10 to the 12, for, uh, 13 and 14. And here we're looking at constant temperature. So if this is 
10 to the 5, 10 to the 5.5, and 10 to the 6. And yeah, okay. And then we can see this and uh, find the scattering. So going back to the temporal broadening, you can put in here in this and this. You can get the, the result we found for a given pressure, metallicity, and redshift, and we find the, in the scattering scattering time scale. So this is the scattering time scale. Uh, the thick line, this is, this is a point 0.1, is roughly where time will detect it. So it's a bit disappointing that filaments and sheets are well below this. This is for a single screen. We do the calculation on also for a, a passing through uh, many screens over redshift. You can see that for halos, it, it's more, uh, the, the are conditions under which we can detect it in uh, Going to lower frequency may help to detect filaments. Uh, so this is too low, but we do have, a, a luckily, the a bandwidth is basically just a one over the scattering time. So there is still hope to detect the modulation. But I won't go into this because I want to show you uh, the dispersion measure. So this is the dispersion measure for a single object, a sheet, filament, and halo. And once we have this, <coughs> we can, we can uh, count the number of the average number of intercepted uh, objects and then find the total dispersion measure. I'll skip through this. This is a very simple calculation. I'll skip this. And yeah, so this, these are the numbers just uh, getting integrating and getting the number of intercepted objects. And finally, this is the dispersion measure. This is for sheets, this is for filaments, uh, and the black line, the black line is the dispersion measure of the IGN. Just going through, uh, assuming a, 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 a diffused IGN. Uh, we also add here the scatter, this, this is done using the elastic formation. The scattering on the the idea. So basically, the sheets and filaments make up a, a good fraction of the uh, of the dispersion measure of the IPM, and we want to explore this and look at the uh, the error on the they add on it. Yeah. So that's it. Thank you so much, Shavon. We have time for a quick question. Anybody have any questions? One quick question is about FRB. Mm -hmm. um, can you, you're talking mostly about filaments and sheets at fairly high redshift. Uh, do you expect, how many FRB do you expect to see that will allow you to actually throw such a high redshift? Yeah, um, so we don't know that they exist for sure. We, we saw it on the first, uh, in the first draft that it's possible, the RFRBs need very high dispersion measure, which should, should they, uh, uh, give us a clue that they do exist at very high redshift. Also, we know that there are um, GRBs at redshift 9, and they're related to a um, high magnetic field, which also could be related to FRBs. So this is a clue that we can have some, uh, it's possible. It's possible and probably likely. We actually can have one more question, so I'll be uh, How can you separate the effect due to the filament and the electrons within the host galaxy of FRBs? Uh, the, the filament and? 
in the electrons or within the host galaxy. Oh, so yeah. So, yeah. So, first of all, you have the effect of redshift, right? The effect of redshift uh, is the stuff that's going to originate from the uh, host galaxy will have a different redshift and also a different frequency in which you would detect it. You could detect it at higher frequencies uh, compared to um, filaments or sheets. Um, yeah, uh, there are a few ways to separate them. Uh, if you have both uh, the scattering time and the uh, uh, scintillation bandwidth, usually the one that has a more dense environment will cause the, uh, the scattering time to be broadened, and uh, uh, the one that is uh, it's basically like what we see in the in the Milky Way, you, you usually see the bandwidth of the Milky Way and the scattering of the host. All right, thank you so much. Let's uh, thank Joel again.